This Fringy Life is brought to you by the Vancouver International Fringe Festival and the Arts Report on CITR 101.9 FM. Find them online at citr.ca. For more info on The Fringe, go to vancouverfringe.com. Going into the Vancouver Fringe Awards Night, the play Little Orange Men had a lot of buzz from critics and audiences alike. But who could have predicted performer Ingrid Hansen and director Kathleen Greenfield, both UVic grads, would claim three of the eight awards given out, including Volunteer Pick, the Vancouver Playhouse Award, and one of the six Pick of the Fringe selections. I'm Adam Yanush for This Fringy Life, and in this episode, we talk to Ingrid and Kathleen from Snafu Dance Theatre about Little Orange Men. So we're very excited, um, and the winner of this award will be uh, offered a run in, uh, in, the, in a future Playhouse season. Um, so, the winner of the award is... Little Orange Man! Um, I'm Kathleen, I'm the silent director, and I don't have much to say because I'm relatively shy, so... Um, but on behalf of Ingrid and myself, I thank you everybody for coming to see the show. Okay, so this is the Volunteer Choice Award. Um, other than the fact that we have alcohol, there's really nothing to tell you. And the award goes to, oh my god, the right bikes! Little orange man! Come collect your liquor. Are you still shy? I'm still feeling pretty shy, but uh, thanks everybody. You guys are really. I ran here. Uh, you won the uh, critics' pick, right? Playhouse. 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 Playhouse award. Fantastic, continue! <laughs> <laughs> and the winners of the 2011 Vancouver International Fringe Festival Public Market Pick of the Fringe are... The Little Orange Man. I caught up with the artists backstage at Performance Works just after the award show wrapped up. Kathleen had emerged from her onstage shyness to comment on the multiple wins. I feel really great. I was really nervous up there, obviously, as you can tell. Um, but it's really amazing, especially the volunteers loving us. I think that's really special because a lot of volunteers I flyered and said, you should really come see our show. So I'm really glad that they took that and went with it. Ingrid, who arrived to the award show just in time to accept her second award, started out a bit speechless. I feel great. I feel very honored. It's very special. That's all. <laughs> it will no doubt take time to fully process the accomplishment, but... I wanted to know how they, as artists in BC today, how do they interpret the recognition for Little Orange Men? Was this validation for countless hours of thankless work? I don't, um, I don't often go seeking for validation, but I know what you mean um, <laughs> because I was just traveling, um, and I was in Germany. I was seeing some shows there, and. I was marveling at the extremely low ticket prices. I went to see a professional dance piece for a dollar or a euro. And um, I was, you know, contemplating that. And it's like, oh, well, of course, that's the way it's supposed to be. And, oh, why are the arts, um, you know, government funded and government subsidized and, and, and endorsed by businesses and, and, and um, funded? Oh, because it's not because artists poo-poo, we're, we're poor people, we need, we need your money, boo-hoo, our, I, I need to create my art, bah-ha-ha. Ha. It's because if they're not publicly funded, it becomes an elite thing and nobody can afford it. And that's why they're funded in Europe, because they understand that. And that's what's so magical about the fringe, is because 100% of the ticket proceeds go directly to the artists. The artists can sometimes, um, you know, make a bit of a living. And there's very little in the way of a middleman between, like you were saying earlier, Kathleen, uh, between the artists and the public. You're out there promoting your show face-to-face -face with the public, with, with your patrons, and getting direct feedback from them afterwards. And... Um, it's a real treat to be at the Fringe. Yeah, it's yeah. very universal and kind of um, democratic, maybe. It's, it's mm -hmm. for everyone. Everyone's involved. Yeah, and it's you get... It's not an elite thing. It's not an elite thing, and you yeah. get audiences from a much wider spectrum than you, maybe your regular theater-going audience because uh, people will take a chance on the Fringe because it's 10 bucks. It's, when you win an award, it's also like, oh my gosh, they understand us. <laughs> 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 There's, it's true, like, you, you know, you do some 
crazy um, found object puppetry on stage and to have people respond to that and actually feel something about it, um, suddenly you realize that there's something going on in the collective unconscious that makes people understand us. Yeah. Yes. What yeah. We're doing. I was really proud, too, because when we first created the show last year, it was under a different title, um, No Word Bound, and we took it to the Calgary Fringe to, at, the, at this very first stage just to test it out. And we had some nights where we had, you know, 10 audience members, which for a Fringe show isn't bad. <laughs> um, but, you know, like really modest houses, and, and, um, and it, it's really um, wonderful to then be able to rework and revisit a project and... We changed quite a deal, and then have it have it fly. Yeah, have the work yeah. actually be have the work have have had the work go towards something like have mm. the had the work actually be responded to. Little Orange Men, if you haven't seen it, is a one woman show featuring Ingrid Hansen as Kit, a hyperactive twelve year old girl with an enormous imagination, a penchant for lapsing into Danish and the owner of a remarkable helmet that allows her to download the dreams of audience members. The play creates a sprawling world, features a loosely structured story, and fearlessly incorporates audience interaction. So, where did the ideas come from? The short answer is the mind of Ingrid Hansen. I think this is the most linear and accessible show I've created yet. <laughs> and I'm not joking. Uh, and if you saw any of our other shows you made, maybe we would understand. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, Kathleen and I started working together on this very early in the process. And um, we very first actually created a 10-minute exploration of this character and the dream interpretations um, for a show hosted by Vancouver's indie theatre company, It's a Zoo, which are all UV, almost all UVic graduates um, living in Vancouver who created um, a theatre collective type performance uh, called Bridge Mix, where it was a parkade and um, audiences toured through the parkade and shot, saw 10-minute shows by all different theatre companies. So we created, um, a t there was a 10-minute version of this 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 12-year-old girl doing her dream experiments um, at Bridge Mix. And that was our very, very first kind of mm -hmm. testing grounds for this. The show involved a lot of food-based puppetry as well, including celery doubling as legs, a viciously stabbed apple, and a bread beard. And then we spent a lot of time sitting in Ingrid's living room playing with vegetables and toys. <laughs> um, figuring out images. So that was kind of where the story... A lot of time playing with your food. Yeah, literally. I think I think the food actually. I was telling someone this today. Um, I think the food actually came out of the fact that we both decided that we would stop eating during rehearsal, um, and that it was very important for us to make sure that we eat. So we started having vegetables surrounding us so that we could eat during rehearsal, and then all of a sudden Ingrid was you know tap dancing with shoes yeah. stuck in celery, celery. <laughs> and and you know so so um, the food actually evolved from the desire to make sure that we were healthy. From our fast <laughs> metabolism. <laughs> For Kathleen, as the director, it must have been a tall order to, on the one hand, facilitate Ingrid's raw creativity, but on the other hand, enforce some coherence and structure. How was it working with Ingrid? Um, it was actually very easy. I've worked with a lot of performers, and I've noticed over time that it is very important to have a performer who um, has no fear. <laughs> And so to, ha to work with Ingrid and with a person um, who just absolutely has no fear with whatever she does. And you can say, I'd really love it if we did this and she'll go and learn it. <laughs> I, have um, <laughs> I have fear. <laughs> but, it's, but it's a fear that is, um, it's something that, um, it's some, like, okay, a desire to overcome fear. Um, and so, and so it's just been so amazing because every single part of the process I've, I've not had to work at getting a performer to get over something. It's all, always been about um, what what the heck can we do, <laughs> you know? Um, every single step of the process has been so amazing because it's always been about how far can we push it. And Ingrid had equal praise for her director. It's been amazing. Kathleen has been uh, one of the most understanding. And I, I, I was thinking about it one night, and I this show would have never been anything like this if I'd been working with any other director who I know who I can think of because there's no way I would have told them the strange ideas that I have told Kathleen. <laughs> and she has gone, yes, let's try it. A big part of their rehearsal process was a large support system of friends and peers to watch, evaluate, and comment on their evolving work. Um, one of the great things about us working together is we, we, we smash and bash and we create all of these strange 
um, things. And then we have a really fabulous support network in Victoria mm -hmm. uh, of theater artists and regular people, um, which is, we find it very important to get the feedback from both. <laughs> um, but from the Belfry and from Theater Scam and from Tim Gosley and Merlin Sun and from Rob Hunter and, yeah. and Theater in Kanu and 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 then all of the friends and everyone at Discovery Coffee and just um, lots and lots of uh, testing in front of people is very useful as well. So we've had some show and tells, which so we're you very recommend fun. that to any any artist is show it to a lot of people, get a lot of feedback. Yeah, heck yes. Yeah, I, I've um, created a lot of shows and I, I didn't realize till I worked with Ingrid how important it is to get people to come see your show um, and get the feedback. And you don't have to take all of it. You can sure. throw some away completely. But to get that working audience, um, that response going is so important and it makes for such an amazing opportunity mm. to, to show people. Mm. It can be crazy making too, because lots of people will give you um, distinctly right. off the opposite feedback yeah. or yeah. what they yeah. want if they were creating the show, but it's not them, you know, or their yeah. stories. So, but it, it, it is so, so useful. And what about all the Danish? Um, I've always been fascinated myself with uh, nonsense language or um, when you, when you, when I hear words spoken in a language I don't understand and there's somehow uh, a different kind of truth comes through. The same way, you, same thing you get from somebody's physicality or from some yeah, watching a dance piece sometimes where you're not being told what to think. In a, still, you're still getting but you're getting, some, you're getting a, a different level of communication. And I actually just realized right now um, that that's one of the things I like about the Danish. Mm -hmm. But um, I just, yeah, I was, thought it was something to play with. I find that the, um, the inflection and like the, the use of words, it, it draws attention to the image. Um, so you're still speaking, you're still storytelling, but suddenly it goes back and forth from the image to um, the storytelling. Finally, with the Vancouver Playhouse Award comes the opportunity to retool, expand, and perform Little Orange Men as part of next year's Playhouse season. How will they take on that challenge? Well, what might be fun is um, the Belfry Theatre in Victoria is mentoring us on creating a piece called Kit and Jane, which is an unofficial standalone sequel to Little Orange Man, where the character Kit, who is 12 in Little Orange Man, um, is then 14 and running a pirate radio station out of her bedroom. Um, and so, you know, the idea is that potentially one day down the road, it may be really fun to do the shows as a double bill, or as you see one show one night and another one running the other night kind of a thing. I don't know if that could happen at the Playhouse. Maybe that's a little soon. But, um, yeah, I... I well, I think this would be the 2012-13 season, so this would be mm -hmm. next. So it would be years. after we develop. After we've developed so, it and Jane. So you could theoretically have two shows by then. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, we will, <laughs> in yes. some form or another. Mm -hmm. You can see the gears turning in your heads right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ingrid Hansen and Kathleen Greenfield. Their show, Little Green Men, is a pick of the fringe show and will be at the Waterfront Theater on Sunday, September 25th, at 4:55 p.m. For this fringy life, I'm Adam Yanush. Oh